This is Tracy here with another edition of a view from Tracy's point and I know it has been a minute since we talked about Queen Sugar Okay, but I am back uh, Wanted to talk about the fact that we learned that um, Season seven will be the final season of Queen Sugar. I know there was a lot of speculation throughout this season that um, the show was going to be canceled that this was going to be the final season and to be honest with you guys, the way that the season ended, I would have been okay with season six being the ending because I really don't know what they're going to bring us in season seven that will kind of bring closure. I think we kind of, okay, let me back up a little bit because those of you who have been following my recaps of Queen Sugar, you know that my feelings on the show, although I still love the show, I appreciate everything that Queen Sugar has brought us. You know, we need um, this type of option for black viewing. You know, when we want to see television shows, we don't want to see, you know, a lot of the ratchetness that we get with the love and hip hop and the Real Housewives of Atlanta you know, in terms of reality TV, we do want dramas. We want black dramas that make sense and that keeps us engaged in the storyline. And so my feelings on Queen Sugar is after season three, I kind of, yeah, I think after season three, they started losing their way for me. And I pointed out to you all before how I just felt like the storyline was getting so far away from where it started, which was all about the farm and the sugar mill and, you know, uh, Charlie coming in and starting Queen Sugar. And I talked about this before, how it seems like every season, the borderlines don't win. They never win. It seems like they're always on the losing side you know, we saw Charlie go from this relationship with Davis that falls apart. That's how she ends up in St. Joe with the rest of her family. Well, not the rest of her family. Well, yeah, with her half siblings. And I know I shouldn't say half. God forgive me because I hate that term. But she ended up with her siblings and with her aunt and that type of thing. And, you know, family from the father's side. And she started the sugar mill. She lost the sugar mill. Then she wanted to get into politics or somehow she ended up in politics. That doesn't seem to have panned out or the city council role. That didn't seem to pan out. You know, so now they're trying to push her into, you know, a higher level of politics. And now we find out that she doesn't really want to do that either. And so it just, I don't know how to put my finger on it, but it just seems like after season three, they, the stories just started going off in different directions and it just got away from where they were. And then even the storyline with the Landry's and them wanting to build a federal prison, then it was going to be a shopping, a highway, then it turned to a shopping mall. And it just never seems to be closure to any of these stories. The stories just keep you know, taking on the life of their own. And I don't know if it's because they're switching up writers, you know, they get writers on the show. Those people, you know, build their resume and then they get options to go and do other things. Like maybe that's what it is, you know, just changing up of writers and the writers wanting to do their own thing. So let's get back to season one, okay, of Queen Sugar. And so there were two things that I needed to happen on Queen Sugar before it came to a crashing end. One, unpopular opinion. I always wanted Charlie and Davis to get back together. That has just like always been my dream. I know Davis was a creep. 
he cheated on Charlie. Then we found out he had a baby on Charlie. But for some reason, I just feel like Davis and Charlie balance each other out. I don't think that Charlie will ever be happy with any of these men that she's met in St. Joe. They don't challenge her. And we talked about, you know, how Charlie... The men in Charlie's life just seem to go upstairs and never come back down. You know how they do in the uh, sitcoms when they're trying to get some of these actors off the show and they don't want to kill them off. They have them go upstairs and then we just never see them anymore, right? And so that's kind of how I felt about Charlie and her love interest on the show. So we know she dated Remy and then Remy went to help his family move and he never came back. So Remy has been missing for two seasons. We don't know what happened to Remy. Then we had the Hispanic doctor or uh, physician's assistant. We The last time we saw him was when they had turned the sugar mill into the clinic for the Hispanic workers, the migrant workers, and they came in and raided the place. We never saw him again after that. And so who else was Charlie involved with? Seems like she had one other love interest, but it just seems like nobody ever worked out for Charlie. So I am um, very, very happy that her and Davis are back together. Hopefully um, season seven will bring the wedding of Charlie and Davis getting remarried. I got my fingers crossed. I mean, how do you guys feel about the whole Charlie and David situation? Um, are you like once a cheater, always a cheater, and she should never forgive him and take him back? Or are you open to the fact that, you know, they have this newfound relationship and Davis has learned from his mistakes? Then the second storyline, and this is the one that people always get on me about. So the second storyline is in season one, of Queen Sugar. Ralph Angel is at the park with Blue and he leaves Blue on the playground and he goes to the corner store and he pulls out a gun and he robs the corner store. Ralph Angel has never paid for that. Okay, and maybe he has paid, maybe all the bad things that happened to him throughout the last six seasons or the last five seasons have been paid back. And then I think it was in season three, maybe season four, where Ralph Angel went into a gas station and the girl who was working at the corner store that day was working at the gas station and she remembered Ralph Angel and she's like, hey, I remember you, you got me fired. And then I was like, okay, Ralph Angel about to go to jail, right? And I think the police showed up later that night or the next day. And nothing ever came up of that robbery scene. And so I have been waiting for Ralph Angel to get arrested for that robbery. Like I've been waiting for him to pay for that robbery scene. And not so much that he robbed the store, but the fact that he left Blue on the playground to go and rob the store. And it just seems like... Queen Sugar just kind of brushed over that. They, they, you know, never addressed the fact that he put his child in danger, that he put himself in danger by doing that. And, but they want to show Ralph Angel as this great dad, this perfect father who's made mistakes, but, you know, he's still a great father. Well, to me, great fathers don't leave you on the playground when you're like three or four years old to go and rob a convenience store. So those are two things that have stayed with me through the course of Queen Sugar. And it looks like we're going to get reconciliation uh, with Charlie and Davis. Not so sure about Ralph Angel because no matter what piss poor mistake Ralph Angel makes, he never pays for it in the end. So let's go ahead. Um, even though I haven't done my videos for the past five <laughs> episodes because to be honest with you guys I'm watching it but I just wasn't motivated to do the videos for it because everything was kind of just you know drifting and floating along and there was nothing really to um you know to be rushing to get on camera and say hey my oh my god this episode of Queen Sugar was so phenomenal but knowing that you know it is coming to an end I kind of want to share you know, some of the things that happened in the past five episodes, as well as why I think 
it's time. Like I am perfectly okay with Queen Sugar coming to an end because I believe that it has run its course. And so I'm not going to read all my notes. I'm just going to like do a quick walkthrough of what happened. So I'm going to go back to... called or maybe just stay there and you guys remember each title of season six was from a poem that was written and I've talked to you in past videos about that poem and so this one was or maybe just stay there and so you know we have Charlie and Davis you know um, flirting on FaceTime so remember Charlie and Davis have gotten back together after Davis came, like of all the people she could have called and said, I have COVID, she chose Davis. And Davis came and took care of her. And so, and this is where I, we get into the writing because then Davis had time to come and take care of her while she had COVID. They had their little rendezvous, rendezvous in California when she was meeting with the DMC, DNC to discuss um, her role. And I don't think I brought this up before, but they were telling Charlie that she had her option of running for a district, you know, that encompasses New Orleans and St. Joe, or she could run for a district in California. And so I was thinking, okay, so I guess she uh, running for Kamala Harris seat. Okay, that's what the seat was. And I couldn't think of who left politics in the Louisiana area that they would have been trying to give her that seat, but I'm sure it was somebody prominent. So anyway, um, Charlie and Davis, you know, reconciling their relationship, but they're on two different, you know, sides of the country and they can't seem to find time for each other, you know, but they get on first, um, FaceTime, they're flirting and carrying on. And so on this particular episode, Charlie um, has hosted a day, uh, spa day, for her Aunt Vi Nova, I can't remember. I don't think that Darla was there. I think it was just the three of them. And so it was nice to see them um, talking and getting along, um, you know, spending quality time together. And during that outing, um, they, you know, joke with Charlie, telling Charlie she's sprung. And then Nova um, quoted Audrey Lord, Lord saying, taking care of myself is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation. And she said that that meant a lot to her. So while they're, you know, having their spa day, uh, Charlie gets a message and she has to leave. So she abandons Aunt Vi and Nova, you know, on the spa day, the spa day, which was crazy to me. So then we have a scene with Darla and Ralph Angel. So you guys know uh, Ralph Angel turned back to a life of crime. He was working with the guy and they were stealing this equipment. It was sort of like, I believe, um, you know how companies switch out their computers and technology printers, that type of stuff. And they'll store it at a warehouse and then they'll bring in their new equipment. So they were stealing this um, equipment that was stored at this warehouse. And so Ralph Angel took his money to that he earned, Theo was the guy he was working with. So he took that money and spent it on a baby moon because you guys know we have all these new traditions where women are having babies. So a baby moon, if you don't know, it's like a little quick, quick weekend trip getaway right before a woman gives birth. And so it's sort of like a honeymoon, but since people aren't really getting married these days, they having the baby moon, they get, you know, having the baby before the marriage. And so they celebrate that. So Ralph Angel, who has bigger problems financially, still saw fit to take Darla on this trip, even though they are living off of payday loans. He done quit his job and all of this stuff. This is what he spent this money on. 
And so they seem to have been having a good time. Darla, you know, walking in darkness as usual, don't know what the hell is going on and just seems to be totally oblivious to what Ralph Angel is out there in these streets doing. So she, you know, is enjoying herself. So then we have Charlie and she arrives at a restaurant and it's the guy, I can't remember his name from the DNC. Remember it was him and the lady and they were working together trying to get Charlie um, to buy into their idea that she would be the perfect person to run for one of these seats. And so he's basically talking to Charlie, talking, you know, saying, you know, talking about her interview that she had on the Gail King show. Because remember, Gail interviewed her and it came up about Davis and their reconciliation. And Charlie was basically like, you know, I still love him. I'm going to stand by him and y'all just going to have to deal with it. And so Charlie thought that he, you know, was about to tell her that because of that, they don't want to have her run for that seat. But um, it wasn't surprising when, you know, Charlie went on her rant about, you know, she wasn't going to compromise and, you know, thank you for the opportunity. You know, it was just so obvious that he was going to turn around and say, oh, no, no. You know, we love the fact that you're doing that and we still want you to run. So it was like, OK. So then later on, there was a scene with Charlie and she's walking through the park and she's looking at a young couple and she decides to FaceTime Davis again because that's basically their relationship now. And she lets him know that she's at the park, you know, where they had met a few months ago. And it makes her feel close to Davis. And she wants to know if he can come and visit. He says no, but he wants her to come. So Davis hints at possibly quitting his new job because Davis has gone from Baylor University to, what, Xavier University. He was going to play basketball with the New Orleans team. Now he's back in California as the coach of a women's basketball team. So he's basically saying he's willing to give it all up to be with Charlie because he doesn't like this distance between them. So then we go over to Nova and Nova is on the phone with Liza and she lets her know that she's taking the weekend off and we'll see her on Monday. And so Nova, I think she laid down to take a nap and, you know, she's all comfortable and everything when she's awakened by the Drug Enforcement Administration busting down her door, you know, coming into her house. And, of course, she's terrified. And, you know, they take her out of the house. And they, you know, of course, they don't really tell you why they're there. They just show you the warrant saying that they have the right to be there. And they are trashing her place, tearing it apart, going through all of her stuff. And so one of the officers says that it looks like a bunch of liberal trash as he's going through all her documents and whatnot. And so um, the lead investigator asked her, you know, how long have you lived here? Nova says she's been there for 13 months. So y'all know this whole thing about this house that Nova is in has really been bothering me because I keep telling you guys how the scenery, the house doesn't seem to change, but the scenery always change outside the house. And I was talking to my daughter and she said that, no, it's a different house because Nova and Calvin bought a house together. Calvin, who we have not heard from, have not seen, in all of season six, all we know is that them folks came to get Calvin for questioning at the end of season five. And I guess Nova broke up with Calvin and that was the end of that. We don't even know the outcome of what happened with Calvin, but maybe they will readdress that in season seven. So anyway, my thing about Nova and this house so although the outside is different, like she has a fence, well, no, because it seems like she has a fence around the yard in the other house. But the thing that's really been getting me and is so weird to me about Nova's house is the fact that the furnishings are the same, the layout is the same, and the color of the walls is the same. <laughs> so, but if y'all say it's a new house, then we're going to go with it is a new house. So anyway, we they're searching Nova's house and it's apparent that the search is not about drugs as the officer claimed, but they are there to intimidate her for her activism. And so, you know, just the racism of it all. Let's just say that the racism of it all. 
So Nova is standing strong, though she's telling them her rights, that they have no right to do this, that they are harassing her. Um, the officer, you know, is basically saying that he has a right to be there, that she has these drugs. And then all of a sudden, Dominic shows up. And you guys know, you know, Dominic throughout the rest of the season, you know, he seems to be falling in love with Nova. And so people are have their fingers crossed that this is a real relationship. But I still would not be surprised if Dominic ends up to be an agent for the CIA, okay? Because, <laughs> you know, they surveilled the Black Lives Matter people and, you know, they ruin their lives. They wreck their lives, okay? Because they don't want Black people to be educated and informed. So, child, anyway, um, they found some marijuana. You know, Nova was telling them, okay, there's marijuana in there. I have a medical card. Uh, but they ignore her and they place her under arrest. And Dominic vows to stay at her place until the officers leave and ask, who can he call? And Nova doesn't um, reply and she is carried to the police car. And at one point during that little shakedown, they pulled their gun on um. Nova and Dominic threw them on the ground, handcuffed them and everything. So, okay. Then we move on to Micah and Isaiah. So y'all know we have been trying to figure out this whole Micah and Isaiah situation since the beginning of the season, trying to figure out if Micah and Isaiah are eventually going to like have a relationship. Are they going to fall in love? If Isaiah is going to turn Micah out? <laughs> We didn't know what was going to happen with this whole situation. But they drug this storyline out until the very end. So Mike and Isaiah are leaving the movies. And Isaiah says that he sees an improvement in Micah. Because, you know, Micah has been dis, um, depressed and, you know, dealing with still has unresolved trauma, you know, from his incident with the police. Um, Michael suggests that they have lunch, but Isaiah says that he has a lunch date with someone he's been interested in. And he doesn't tell Michael who it is and jokes that Michael secret and lets Michael know that he's secretly dating the professor, the lady professor. So they're back on campus and Michael's playing cards with some guys. When Isaiah walks in blushing, Michael asks how his date went. One of the guys leave and Isaiah takes his place. And then one of the other guys named Kirk um, makes some transphobic comments and Isaiah begins to clown him as a distraction. Now, I'm not sure why I wrote transphobic. I can't remember. <laughs> why did I write transphobic instead of homophobic? Hmm. Maybe... I don't know why I wrote that. Y'all remind me why I wrote that. Hmm, I have to revisit that. Anyway, um, we go back to Charlie and she surprises Michael with a visit and she discussed the offer that the DNC has made. Michael is excited. And then um, it turns out that Charlie... So back then, Charlie was going to be running for the California seat, but I think at some point she switched up and said that she was going to run for the Louisiana seat. And then Charlie asked him about um, Isaiah, and she encouraged him to invite Isaiah over for dinner. And then Micah admits to Charlie that based on how some of the other guys on campus treat Isaiah, he may be gay, but he hasn't asked him because it never came up. And then I thought it was really weird that Charlie begins to talk to Micah about, you know, he could be wrong about Isaiah being gay. But if Isaiah is gay, it's okay. And then if Micah is gay, it's okay. <laughs> now, I just thought that was a weird conversation. Like the boy trying to express to you his feelings about this man. And then you making him more confused. And, you know, she gives him like the inclusion speech and says that life is hard enough. So when you find someone to love, to be best friends with, hold on to those people and let the haters kiss your ASS. And I just felt that Charlie was acting like the parent that always suspected their child was gay and is relieved that the child has finally figured it out and decided to come out. I just thought that whole interaction was strange. Then um, we go back to Prosper and his home health aide. I believe that lady's name is Sandy for some reason. 
But anyway, they're working on his fitness when Billy walks in and takes notice of their camaraderie and Billy is excited for him and joins in on the count as Prosper um, lifts his hand weights. And then Billy um, lets Prosper know that um, she is headed out. Let me see, in jokes, what does she joke about? Um, how she downplays St. Josephine as a small town country. She says her kids are asking about Prosper. So she wants to pick up something for dinner and they FaceTime with them when she returns. And I never did figure out how old Billy's children were because at some point Prosper asked Billy to stay a little longer. So are these high school age children? Are these grown children? I don't recall ever finding out how old Billy's children were and why she felt it was okay to just up and leave them if they were minor children. But I'm assuming that they're with her dad, her ex-husband or whoever. And so she can stay gone because we know that she can work online. Like she doesn't have to be in a physical office to do her work. So then there was a scene with Hollywood and Gabriel. He took him to get a haircut. And I couldn't figure out if the barbershop is at the spot or is it next door to the spot? Like, is it part of the spot? Y'all let me know. So Gabriel tells the barber, you know, what kind of haircut that he wants. The sheriff comes in and the barber lets Hollywood know that the sheriff has been by and he's asking about Ralph Angel. So Hollywood, of course, calls Ralph Angel and lets him know that Theo was arrested and that the sheriff was asking questions about him. So Ralph Angel is about to have a heart attack because he knows they done stole that stuff and he doesn't know how this is going to come back and bite him in the butt. And of course, Hollywood is pissed, you know, that the police are coming up there to his place looking for Ralph Angel. So he wants to get to the bottom of what's going on. And let's see, um, then Ralph Angel did admit that he did work for Thiel recently, but doesn't tell Hollywood what it is. And then um, he abruptly ended the call because he is about to lose his mind. And so, of course, Darla is concerned about Ralph Angel's sudden move change. He confesses that he's been lying and he lets her know that the harvest is no good and Theo offered him a job. But he said no. And then when the soil came back bad, he decided to go ahead and be the driver for Theo. Now Theo has been arrested and he is scared as hell. Okay, so the real reason uh, that he took her on the trip is because he needed space to breathe, not because he was really into the whole baby moon um, thing. So, of course, Darla was pissed off that Ralph Angel once again doing something that he had no business doing. You know, Adala asked him if this is what it will always be like, looking over their shoulder. And what I found interesting is that as all of this unveiled itself over the course of the next couple of episodes, nobody ever asked Ralph Angel, why you quit your job? Like, dude, you should have held on to that job. Uh, we never, I don't think, figure out what was going on with Darla and the insurance company. Did the insurance company just shut down because of COVID? Did they go out of business because of COVID? Because I'm thinking that, that the insurance company is an essential company. So for them to just shut down, what happened to all the policies? Like, are they fulfilling people's policies when people dying? How are people getting the money from the policies from the insurance company? So Darla's whole job situation didn't make any sense either. So then we had the whole scene with um, Hollywood and Celine. We all knew that Celine was after Hollywood, wanted her some Hollywood. So in episode six, she finally made her move when Hollywood took Gabriel back home. Um, Celine took it upon herself to try and kiss Hollywood, but Hollywood stopped her right in her tracks. <laughs> and then he went straight home and told Aunt Vi about it. And then Aunt Vi had the nerve to try and get an attitude with Hollywood, talking about how, how was she able to be that close to try and kiss you. So Hollywood had to check Aunt Vi. But y'all know um, that wasn't the end of it because Billy and... So remember, Billy and Prosper were going to have dinner but then he had been invited a uh, over. So when they were getting ready to go to Prosper's, 
And Vi told Hollywood, well, we need to go stop by that motel and see Miss Lee, <laughs> okay? Because she was going to check her by any means necessary. But I think when they got to the hotel, Celine had packed up and moved away. So then when we get to Prosper and Billy, um, they get into, no. So Aunt Vi shows up, Billy's upset. That once again, here come the damn bull loans, okay? When she's trying to have quality time with her father. And then Billy and Vi get into an argument over the Jimmy Dale story. And Billy decides to let Aunt Vi know what's really on her mind. And she says that for 20 years, she's let Aunt Vi um, paint herself as a victim. But she's not the only victim. She tells the story uh, that she told Nova talking about, you know, she was a child. And I'm like, girl, you were 18 years old. You were not a child. And I still don't know what you thought was going to happen. You flirting with this grown-ass man, this grown-ass man flirting with you, and then you go and meet him. <laughs> okay, some way you know you had no business going to meet him. So at some point, even though you were 18 years old, you were old enough and smart enough to know that that man wanted some of your punani. There was nothing else um, that he possibly could have wanted from you. And I can remember, and I think I shared this with you guys before, how my daughter would come home and she would, you know, tell me like, mama, you know, this man, he was like 40 years old, was trying to talk to me at the gas station. And then when she would go to the clubs, because here they would let um, young women in the club 18 and over, but then the guys had to be like 21 or 25 years or over to get into the club. So you're setting up the situation for older men to date younger women. And I will always say to my daughter, when a grown man <laughs> approaches your 18, 19 year old self, ask yourself, what does he want with me? What do I have to offer this man that a woman his age can't offer? I said, so like, I don't, I wanted her to think, I wanted, you know, my daughters to be able to think that something ain't right here. Like, what does he want from me? Ask yourself that question. When that 40 year old man comes to an 18 year old, what does he want from me? And chances are he wants to get between your legs. That's all he wants. And so I just always pose the question instead of saying, oh, he's a creep, he's a slime ball. I pose the question to make my daughters think. Yeah, what do I have to offer a 40 year old man? Why would I want to be with a 40 year old man? But I mean, there are, you know, grown men that marry 18 year old women and, you know, they're happy and they go on to live happy lives together. So, I mean, I'm not knocking it, but I just want you to be clear about what the expectations are on both sides of the fence. So as they have this conversation, everyone is shocked and Billy runs out and Vi is about to go after her when Hollywood stops her. And basically, um... Telling on Vi, mind your own business and stay out of everybody's stuff. So then um, we're going to have a bar scene and Charlie and Billy are there. We find out that um, Prosper had told Charlie to go find Billy and talk to her. And so I think um, who said she drinks whiskey because it was her daddy's favorite, but it tastes like struggle to her. <laughs> Oh my God, I can't remember which one of them said that. Then Charlie, oh, okay, Billy must be saying that to Charlie. So Charlie says that Prosper sent her to look for Billy because he loves her, but Billy says she doesn't believe it. And then Charlie asks her if she knows what happens when you allow hurt and shame to run you out of your house. People never um, get to know how hard you fought to survive to become the woman you are now. And then Charlie says that she knows what it's like to drown shame and misery, to drown in shame and misery, but to always come back to the surface. And that a she's a and she tells Billy that she's a good mother, a good daughter, and a survivor. And let's see what else happened. Oh, then we went back to Nova in the interrogation room, praying and asking God to cover her and give her strength and clarity. 
Then the agent comes in and asks if she's ready to talk. Nova jumps up and says she's ready to go home. And she points out that she's been there almost four hours. Um, she knows because he's come in the room eight times, once every half hour. She knows that this is an interrogation tactic, okay? <laughs> and actually, I think the feds can hold you for like 48 hours without charging you. And then I was wondering why Nova hadn't called a lawyer. <laughs> why she would say, um, I need a lawyer present. I'm not talking to you. So she threatens to sue them um, out of the amount. And, oh, she threatens to sue them and points out that the amount of weed she had was a misdemeanor in Louisiana. And since she has a medical marijuana card, and he knew this because she keeps it with the marijuana, um, she demands that she be released now. And he does. He releases her. And she walks out and thanks God, you know, that she's in one piece. And then Dominic walks up and lets her know that he was there waiting just like he promised. Child, you was waiting because you knew them people, they had called and told you they was about to let her go. So guys, that was season six, episode six. Uh, my little recap of that. So then we move on to episode seven. So I have to enlarge these notes. And so episode seven was called um, They Would Bloom and Welcome You, once again, part of this uh, poem. And so the episode began with Ralph Angel and Darla standing in front of the police station. And so Ralph Angel has the support of Darla as he walks in. And then in the morning, Nova wakes up in her home, still rav ravaged. In the aftermath of the um, police department searching her home or the um, DEA agent searching her home. And so she gets a call from Charlie regarding Ralph Angel turning himself in. So this was kind of like between episode six and episode seven was where I was just like, okay, I, I can't. Because you're going to tell me that Nova went to jail. Nova, who was thrown down on the ground in front of her home, you know, the police are there, they're, you know, going through her home, they're carrying out boxes. None of this made the news. Nobody contacted Aunt Vi or Charlie or anybody, maybe not Aunt Vi, because I believe Nova lives in New Orleans, not St. Joe. But Nova is this popular author, popular activist, and you mean to tell me that nobody, the media didn't pick up on this story? Like, nobody knew that Nova had been arrested and Nova didn't bother to call anybody and tell them that she had been arrested. And I just thought that that was so peculiar. But that's the story, you know, that they wanted us to go for. So we're going to follow along with it. So at the police station, um, oh, and then I thought it was funny that Darla and Ralph Angel walked up to the police station and they're like standing there like they were on the walk of death, okay? And then they all of a sudden stop. And then Ralph Angel, I guess, basically said, you know, he's just gonna go in, answer these questions because he wasn't under arrest. He was basically, hey, I hear you guys are looking for me. I'm here to answer your questions. But they stand there and they look at the... Um, they look out, you know, look up at the police station and then he says something to Darla and then he walks in. So Darla thought they were walking in together, but Ralph Angel went in by himself. So I was like, well, if he didn't want Darla to go inside with it, what was the point of her getting up out the bed coming down to the police department? But anyway, I guess it made for good cinematography. So... 
Darla, I think, called Charlie and told Charlie what was going on. No, yeah. So when they get to Charlie's house, um, wait, let me stop and back up, back up, back up, back up. Because remember this, remember this happened like four weeks ago. So let me get my thoughts together here. So Charlie bailed Ralph Angel out. She showed up the next day and basically tells him that he needs to tell the family exactly what is going on, how did he end up getting arrested. So when they get to Charlie's house, you know, Ralph Angel, you know, when he get called in his mess, he just has that pitiful, sorrowful look. And I think that's one of the reasons I can't stand Ralph Angel's character because he's all big, bad, and bold. You know, when he thinks he has a bright idea, but then when his idea falls apart, he becomes that little boy and he wants everybody to feel sorry for him. He never wants to take accountability for his bad decision making. So, you know, he's looking all sad and, you know, like, you know, he's trying to tell them that the Landry family um, poisoned his crops. Well, do you have evidence? No, I don't have evidence, but I know it was them. And so he's telling them that basically he felt he was entitled to go and steal from the Landry's because the Landry's had ruined his crop. <laughs> and I'm just like, that is so childish and immature, but that's obviously the way that Ralph Angel thinks. And so, of course, his responses didn't go over well with the family. Um, Charlie reveals that Theo um, got out and called Sam Landry. So Theo is not even in jail anymore. And this lets them know that, oh, you know what? Let me back up. Let me back up. Let me back up. <laughs> Charlie called Nova before she went to the police station. She called Nova and told Nova that Ralph Angel had been arrested. Okay, so Nova didn't know. And then Nova didn't tell Charlie that she had been arrested and what her ordeal had been going through. And so it was just craziness. But anyway, they're having this family discussion. Ralph Angel is doing his woe is me bull crap. And then finally Hollywood had to be the man to step up and tell Ralph Angel that he was full of crap and that he could have came and told them whatever, that he could have asked Charlie them for money. But what he did not say to Ralph Angel was, and you shouldn't have quit your job at that nursing home. <laughs> but nobody brings up the fact that Ralph Angel quit his job at that nursing home. So anyway, you know, he they tell him that they love him, they stand by him, they're going to help him out. So Aunt Vi and Hollywood go to let Sam Landry's office and it turns out that Sam had paid Theo off to set Ralph Angel up. And Ralph Angel had told the family about he knew he wasn't on camera because he had disabled the cameras and all this. And I'm sitting there saying to myself, you dumbass. Even if you disabled the camera, isn't the camera running when you walk up there to disable the camera? So they done recorded you up until the point where you disabled the camera, right? They done recorded you pulling up to the building. They have your car on the camera. So everything that happened before you disabled the camera is already on the camera. But to add insult to injury, um, Sal, um, Sam Landry knew that Ralph Angel was going to try and disable the cameras. So they had other cameras installed to make sure that Ralph Angel got caught. Okay. So despite Hollywood's best efforts, you know, to put on his poker face and claim that the borderline family knows that Sam conspired with Theo, um, Sam is like, I'm smarter than a fifth grader. I ain't going for it. So it's at this point that Sam lets them know that his ultimate plan is to take the farm from Ralph Angel. And I think this is where the whole shopping mall thing comes in. They want to build a shopping mall on the on the board long farm. See how the story just keeps changing, you know, so that went from the the peak, the Landry's overcharging the farmers meal prices so um charlie started the sugar mill then we went to the federal prison they shot down the federal prison then they were going to run the highway through saint joe but then they found out it was a black cemetery child now they over here then found these bones <laughs> did we talk about the bones 
So, oh, we're going to get to that later about the bones on this property. But anyway, Sam Landry wants this land, okay? So Aunt Vi, um, let's see. So then they get back to Aunt Vi's house in Hollywood, explains how Sam and Theo set everything up to trap Ralph Angel, and not even Charlie's attorney can help Ralph Angel um, gamble on going to trial. And so although Ralph Angel wants to fight, Hollywood lets him know that he was caught red-handed on camera. And then when Aunt Vi tells Ralph Angel his freedom is worth more than the land, Ralph Angel brings up his mom being buried on the land, but Charlie says that they could relocate the grave. So they've pretty much given up and saying, boy, you know, got us into something we can't get out of them. So then Ralph Angel goes into Blue's room and he calls Blue on the phone, but he gets his voicemail and he's basically telling Blue that he loves him. Um, Darla comes in and of course she's angry, but she's so in love with uh, Ralph Angel that Ralph Angel could go out and kill 10 people and come back with an explanation as to why he did it to make their life better and Darla would <laughs> go along with it. And so she basically, you know, tells him that he's got to stop lying, that, you know, she's there for the long run. So then we go over here to the school and Micah and Isaiah are in the classroom um, practicing for his presentation when the teacher comes in that he um you know had the little fling with and so Micah you know basically brushes her off you know because now she wants some of Micah again <laughs> right I don't know what she's seeing Micah but um she wants to give Micah a second chance but Micah you know he gets smart with her and basically lets her know they ain't getting back together it ain't happening like you know hurt my feelings one time you won't do it again so let's see. Oh, you know what? They were practicing. She left. And then I think it was when Michael did his presentation, it was after class when she tried to hit on him again, but Michael dismissed the advances. And then I thought it was interesting that Isaiah was there doing, I think Isaiah was there doing the presentation and after he, during the practice presentation, and then the actual presentation, Isaiah was there again. And this lady just boldly walks in flirting with Micah with Isaiah like feet away. So once again, the writing. So then let's see. Um, so Billy lets Prosper know that she's considering heading back to Chicago. But Prosper brings up the revelation that she made about Aunt Vi's abusive ex. But before they talked, Hollywood called, you know, basically to fill Prosper in on what was going on with Ralph Angel. And Billy was about to walk out, but then Prosper said, oh, well, I'm busy myself. Can you call me later and fill me in on the details? So, of course, that made Billy happy. Prosper and um, Billy, they have a conversation. They talk about the whole Jimmy Dale situation. Um, Billy says that her mother blamed her for what happened and wanted to know why she didn't, and then Prosper wanted to know why she didn't tell him, and Billy felt too ashamed to tell her father, and Prosper feels ashamed that he didn't defend his daughter against his former friend. So then the next morning, um, Billy brings Prosper breakfast in bed. Um, Prosper then asks Billy, could she stay longer so they can catch up some? And Billy um, happily agrees. Like, hell with them children back in Chicago. <laughs> stay uh, in this country town and um, build my relationship with my daddy. I wasn't mad at her. I wasn't mad at her. If the kids are in good hands with their father, uh, Billy, you stay as long as you need to. So then Aunt Vi just can't let the whole Celine situation go. So she tracks Celine down and have a talk with her. Um, Gabriel is in school and Aunt Vi uses the moment to criticize um, Celine for hitting on Hollywood. Celine apologizes and says that she should have never disrespected her, Hollywood, and their marriage. She also thanked Aunt Vi for helping her get into therapy and calls her a good friend. But Aunt Vi wasn't seeing it that way. Um, she gave Celine some money and said that she can't help her and Gabriel no more because she ain't trusting this woman with her man. And let's see, what else happened? Uh, Charlie went by Nova's house. Um, Nova tells Charlie about the, the 
the people coming and you know ransacking our house and her getting arrested and Charlie oh they were standing at the door I'm sorry remember weeks have passed they were standing at the door <laughs> Nova hadn't let Charlie in the house so then she opens the door and Charlie comes in and sees the damage and hugs Nova so they got Ralph Angel out. They had the meeting at the house about Ralph Angel. Nova never told, I think, what was going on. I can't remember. Let's see. Nova was feeling really bad. I can't remember if Nova, I might have my notes out of order. But anyway, you guys have probably watched it. You know what order it went in. Um, Charlie basically gives Nova a pep talk and tells her that um, this whole incident did not break her, but in fact gave Nova more power. Um, when things calmed down that evening, Charlie's helping Nova tidy up her hair as Nova continues to vent. Charlie also expresses regret for being unable to stop them from losing the farm, and she also tells Nova to get up and fight in which Nova promises that she'll do. And then back in her office, um, Charlie calls the DNC contact, telling him that she's ready to run for Congress and she'll have to head to DC for a national fundraiser. Um, her plan is to use her political power to protect those she loves. And I thought this was crazy because once again, all of this stuff is happening. Nova getting um, taken in for questioning, Ralph Angel getting arrested in the scheme with the Landrys and with Theo, but none of this made the news. None of this got back to the DNC, right? It was followed, closely following Charlie. And when Charlie was talking to the guy with the DMC, she said some personal things had come up that had helped her reach this decision that um, she needs to be in a place of power in order to make changes and protect the people that she loved. Okay, so meanwhile, <laughs> Ralph Angel uh, meets with Sam at the farm and Sam wants to meet to make sure that they have a deal. Ralph Angel short, you know, you know, he's not happy about the fact that he's got to give up the farm. Um, they have a back and forth and Sam said something about his father, that he was going to tell Ralph Angel something about his father. Ralph Angel was like, I don't want to hear nothing about your daddy. I don't care about your daddy, just like you don't care about my daddy. Like, what are you talking about? And so Ralph, um, Sam Landry was like, you're right. I don't care nothing about your daddy. You got 45 days to get off this land. <laughs> so he went, got back in his um, SUV and drove off. Um, Ralph Angel looks off in the distance and then he heads, you know, you know, because he's such a proud person. And y'all ever knows that Ralph Angel be having on them overalls, but them overalls will never have a speck of dirt on them. They all look like they just came out from the cleaners. They all press freshly starched and spotless, okay? So then he goes walking over. You know how they got that little creek, and then the creek got the wood thing, the wood beam laying across it. So he goes walking. <laughs> That to that land. I think he was going to look for his uh, mama's grave and talk to her. And he basically says that the fight ain't over. So, anyway. <laughs> that was how episode 7 went. and sisters so we have Ralph Angel and Darla and they're talking and you know they're still reminiscing you know talking about everything that's going on and the fact that Ralph Angel you know is going to lose the farm like it's really a reality that they're going to lose the farm Darla assures him that wherever they are is where they are supposed to be 
So it doesn't matter if they lose the farm. And she can say that because Darla got these rich parents in D.C. <laughs> that she just walked away from. So Darla doesn't really have that sense of, of place. You know, she has more of a transient mind because, you know, she is a recovering addict. She's, you know, used to living in crack houses and just doing whatever. So she doesn't have, it's sort of like people that are in the military, how they either, you know, just up, pack up and leave and go to different places, or they have that feeling like they have to buy a home. They need to set up roots because growing up, they could never stay any place low enough to really have strong relationships because their parents were constantly being moved around. And so I think that's the difference between Darla and Ralph Angel when it comes to the land. Ralph Angel has lived there his entire life except for when he was incarcerated. And so he has an attachment to that land, whereas Darla doesn't have an attachment to anything. Like as long as Darla is with Ralph Angel, she is going to be happy. And so basically they need to prepare for the birth of their daughter and Darla doesn't want, you know, a disruption. She wants them to have a place. She wants them to already be in place where they're going to live at before the baby comes. And let's see, then um, Nova is still processing the police raid at her home. And she finds a piece of broken glass on the floor and she realizes that, you know, she starts to have a panic attack and she needs to get control, but she's still upset, which, you know, rightfully so, she has every right, you know, to still be mad. So then we find out that the um, Black Farmers Association has reached a settlement with the government and so whereas they were thinking that they were going to get all these hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars per farmer, it turns out that they're only going to receive um, $20,000 from the Farmers Association. No, they're going to get $20,000, I think, from the USDA and then $20,000 from the American Rescue Plan. So total they're only going to get forty thousand dollars and then i still can figure out or if they even mention whether or not ralph angel is going to be eligible for the forty thousand dollars since he has to turn the farm over to sam sam landry so although they deserve more charlie is basically telling them accept the money it's still progress you know we'll continue to fight another day but you know right now you'll have this money but i'm thinking that forty thousand dollars is nowhere near what these people have lost over the past few years especially with covid and not even the past few years because this is something that has been going on for a very long time and it really impacted them more because of covid so I don't know what would have happened if they turned the money down, but I still believe that they deserve so much more than what they got. So Ralph Angel, of course, is disappointed, and so are the other farmers, but Charlie assures them that they will live to fight another day, and she thanks them for their cooperation. So as they're leaving the meeting, Charlie asks Ralph Angel how he's doing, and he says that he's you know feeling a little better, but damn, they got to take my farm. <laughs> like my stupidity has cost me the farm. And so Charlie says that, you know, she's not giving up on the farm because the land belongs to their family and everything is going to be okay. So then we have Micah and he's showing off his latest photos to Isaiah for his upcoming art show at the real spot. And he thanks Isaiah for always being there for him and showing him how to cope and with meditation. And he's thankful to have a support system like Isaiah. And so one thing I keep forgetting to mention, it seems like every time uh, Micah and Isaiah are having a moment, <laughs> like he's hugging him or, you know, they do the brother hug and all of that. Somebody walks by and was looking at them like, look at these damn F words. Okay, look at these gay dudes, whatever. So I thought that was interesting that that always happened. Like they never say anything to them. Seriously. They never say anything to them, but they just give them that like disapproving look like, ugh. So anyway, um, Hollywood and Aunt Vi are having a conversation and 
Aunt Vi, we know this, um, you know, she's not doing well. You know, she doesn't have any energy. She's just forcing herself to keep moving. Um, we don't know whether she's depressed because they're about to lose the farm, uh, the, um, farm because Selena tried to take a man, you know, that the her place, um, the diner hasn't fully reopened. You know, but she just doesn't have any energy. And so Hollywood says that um, he can skip out on Michael's art show to keep, you know, an eye on her and take care of her and make sure she's okay. You know, but she says that she just needs to um, stop worrying about Ralph Angel, get some rest, and she'll be fine. She doesn't want um, Hollywood to cancel his plans. So then we have seen where Dominic is checking in on Nova and he has some gumbo. And so he says that he was worried because he hasn't seen her in a while. So we don't know how much time has passed from the arrest to now. And so like in the last episode, I think I talked about how Nova got out of jail and then Ralph Angel went to jail, but I'm not sure how much time passed like they didn't let us know if it was the same night, if it was the next night, if a week had passed. Like, we don't know how much time passed between these two arrests. And so Nova says that she's going on a road trip um, to reconnect with her ancestors because she hasn't heard from them lately. You know how Nova be lighting them candles and burning their sage and, you know, be speaking with the ancestors. Well, they done ran out on Nova, okay? So Nova says she got to go um, get back in touch with them. And then she's just going to um, drive and see where her spirit takes her. And Dominic offers to go with her and she accepts. Now, Dominic, aren't you a professor somewhere? Don't you have a job? <laughs> Are you just all in with Nova? And Okay, maybe. Well, no, because Micah is still in school. So Dominic, mm, okay. I don't know. Maybe he's teaching online virtually and he don't need to be um in one place okay i don't know what's going on anyway hollywood heads over to the real spot with ralph angel and the other farmers uh micah hears them expressing frustration about the small amount of the settlement and tells them that they could forcibly fight for change um isaiah is there of course i'm um, showing his homeboy some love and support and um we have a situation breakout. <laughs> so they had put up, Micah had done these photos of him and Isaiah. So one of the farmers was like, basically, what is this gay mess y'all got going on up here? And so he's like, you know, he ain't used to men, you know, showing that type of affection. And why is y'all got this hanging up at the spot? And that, you know, they need to stop trying to push this agenda. And so, of course, Hollywood had to step in and be like, hold the hell up. <laughs> okay, so they um, kind of educate the, the farmer on, you know, like men shouldn't be afraid to show how much they care for each other and love each other. And that basically, Michael, you know, they want to show that it's okay for men to be close. You know, women hug each other. Women spend the night sleeping in the same bed together. You know, women you know, kiss each other, you know, hold hands when they're walking down the street and nobody thinks anything of it. But when men do stuff like that, then suddenly it is a problem. So then we have a scene with um, Charlie and she's at home when Davis calls and, you know, they both miss each other and Davis decided to do something incredibly nice for Charlie. So he tells her that there are tickets, a car outside her home, and she needs to pack an overnight bag. Now, I don't know why Charlie don't never see none of this stuff that Davis should be um, plotting and planning. She just um, don't be paying attention. So basically, if I'm remembering correctly, they went... Like, I didn't know that Charlie and Davis went to Duke University. That was the first thing. So I don't know if they were at their old apartment that they used to share. But anyway, he had recreated, you know, from when they were in their college days. And he was basically telling um, Charlie, you know, how much he loves her. And he wants them to be together. And then he proposes to Charlie. How could I forget that? So he gets down on one knee and he proposes to Charlie. And Charlie is in shock. And she tells Davis, you know, about the opportunity to run for Congress. 
And so then she declines the proposal and she says that at this time, um, she wants both of them to focus on their dreams. And she tells Davis that she wants to make sure that it works for the both of them. And Davis is crying. I'm like, oh, she just break Davis heart again like that. But he says he'll wait for Charlie, that he's in it for the long haul, you know, for the real thing. And he's going to wait for Charlie. He is going to um, hold fast for her. We go back to Dominique, Dominic, I keep calling that man Dominic, Dominic and Nova. And so they're on their impromptu road trip um, when they stop at a gas station in St. Joe. And Dominic tells Nova about a project he's working on where he's petitioning the state to research and find land that was stolen from black families and have them marked as historic land sites. Now, is this going to um, somehow help Rap Angel keep that phone? <laughs> I'm sure it will all tie together. So back at the real spot, um, Hollywood apologizes to Ralph Angel for being so hard on him and unbiased concerning the land. Um, Hollywood, you owe Ralph Angel zero apologies because somebody needs to talk some sense to him because the women just keep calling him and pacifying him and not holding him accountable for the stuff that he's done, what he's doing. And so let's see. Oh, and then while they were at the at the real spot, you know, having this conversation about the guy, the farmer's view on Isaiah and Micah and all of that is heating up. Aunt Vi is at home. She's getting ready to go to bed when she passes out on the bedroom floor. And we're just like, oh my God, you know, are they about to take Aunt Vi out of here? <laughs> you know, so when um, Hollywood returned home, he found her laying on the floor. And he gets her up, but of course, our guy is being stubborn and doesn't want to go to the hospital. So Onova and um, Dominic, you know, continue on their trip and they went to the Whitney or Whitney plantation for a walking tour and they are nervous and feel eerie as they're inside and they walk around and then Dominic specifically feels anger rise up from the treatment of their ancestors and the current treatment that they are enduring today. And so as the tour continues, Dominic and Nova end up in a chapel and there are paintings and sculptures of former slaves on, from the plantation and they encounter some kids playing and one of them um, tells Nova that she's very pretty and I believe Nova told the little girl that she's very pretty. And so, of course, Nova is really filled with emotion. And so she's starting to feel the spirit of the ancestors coming back to her, which is going to strengthen her and help her live on to fight another day for Black people and for their rights. So later that night, Isaiah and Micah head back to their dorm. And Micah's not happy with how the exhibit went. And it hurt Micah's confidence, but... Isaiah does his best to keep Micah's spirits up, you know, because he doesn't been through it all. So he's very strong and empowered. And so it doesn't go well. Um, this leads to a tense conversation between the two. And Isaiah warns uh, Micah not to fall victim to toxic masculinity. Micah says that he doesn't and he's even taken up for Isaiah while people criticize him for being gay. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah is a friend of mine. <laughs> Isaiah says that he never confirmed his sexuality and he doesn't have to. He puts his hand on Micah's shoulder, but Micah like pulls away. Um, the exchange makes Isaiah, Isaiah tearful and he doesn't even really know who Micah is anymore. And so he storms off. So I don't think we ever find out if Isaiah is gay or not, and if he is gay, maybe that's where the transphobic thing came up. Remember in um, episode six, I said something about transphobic. So maybe Isaiah likes men that dress like women. I, I really don't know why I wrote transphobic in those notes. But anyway, um, let's see, the exchange makes um, Isaiah tearful and he doesn't, okay. 
So then Ralph Angel um, makes a surprise stop at uh, Guy in Hollywood. Um, he wants to check in on her and let her know he wants to make things right. Um, Guy tells him he's a good family man. So he once again tells him how good he is without pointing out the dumb mistakes that he makes. And so she also tells him that he had good sense to send Blue to that school in D.C., and that, you know, basically she had done her research and looked it up and that, you know, she was wrong for um, not wanting Blue to leave and, you know, holding him down. And so Ralph Angel admits that he made bad decisions regarding the farm. However, Aunt Vi doesn't seem to care as she tells him that he still has a family. And what else happened on this show? On um, the next day, Charlie and Micah are at advice. Charlie tells them about the opportunity to run for Congress. And I actually thought they already knew she was running for Congress. But like I say, several weeks have passed. Um, so I might be getting things confused. Aunt and Micah are happy for her and encourage Charlie to accept the offer. Aunt Vi asks about Davis and Charlie says that he's supportive. And when Charlie gets home, she texts Davis. And I believe this was when the, the show ended and they zoomed in on, on Charlie's text. And I thought Charlie said on that text, um, yes, I'll marry you. But then after I rewind and came back and rewind and came back, I saw she said something like laugh out loud or something. But anyway, um, Darla and Ralph Angel, uh, they're still on the farm. Darla lets Ralph Angel know that she has, you know, she's planning for the future for the fact that they're going to lose the farm. And she says that she has found an apartment for both of them. Ralph Angel isn't ready to accept that they might have to leave the farm, but he tells Darla he is willing to go back to the nursing home for work. And I'm sitting there saying to myself, well, did the nursing home ask you to come back? To work like you walked out on the people quit without notice you didn't give them a two-week notice you just told them you weren't coming back what makes you think that they still have a job for you <laughs> you know just unrealistic writing going on here so then they hug and you know then we get a view of the farm so that was episode eight and you know i kind of um called this season you know, much ado about nothing. That's kind of how I felt about it. It was still engaging enough for me to continue to watch. I just didn't have that, oh my God, I can't wait to next week's episode feeling at the end of each episode. It was sort of like Tuesday nights at eight o'clock, I watch Queen Sugar and that's just what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to watch Queen Sugar, whether I'm thoroughly enjoying it or not. Tossing in the Meadows. Um, Charlie throws Darla and Ralph Angel a baby shower. Blue comes home to celebrate with them. Um, once again, we have these events like the wedding, and it's just the borderline family there and prosper. You know, like Darla and Ralph Angel have no friends. I don't understand this. Like my daughter, I threw my daughter a baby shower. Um, in um October, and there was like fifty people at the baby shower. <laughs> like I wasn't expecting all those people. And interesting enough, interestingly enough, most of the people that were there were on the her um her boyfriend's side of the family. He had a lot of friends and a lot of family that came to support. You know, she had family and friends. Like, she had friends that came, you know, her college friends. Um, people from different places flew in and everything. And Darla and Ralph and you just don't know. They seem to muster up a lot of people at their um, special occasions. And maybe it's because of the pandemic. Maybe things would have been different if we weren't still going through COVID. So, it's time for um, Darla's baby shower. 
and Charlie's hosting um, at her home. And so Micah's home for the event and he and Charlie do a little bonding in Charlie's um, team setup for the event. Um, Blue also came home, as I mentioned, for the shower, and he's excited to see everybody, especially Aunt Vi, because he didn't get to see Aunt Vi the last time she was there. Um, oh, then um, earlier in the in the, in an earlier scene, Aunt Vi and Hollywood talk about Celine and Gabriel. Although Aunt Vi cut off Celine, Hollywood says that he is going to keep in touch with Gabriel. Um, which kind of upsets Aunt Vi, like, <laughs> because in order to keep up with Gabriel, that means you got to keep up with Celine. Oh, child. So maybe Celine will be back in um, season seven, wreaking havoc. So Nova's making flower arrangements for the shower when Dominic shows up with a muffin and tea for Nova. He also has information regarding the bones on the farm, and it turns out that they are human bones, as we already knew, but um, they may be from a graveyard. That was the new revelation. And so y'all know if it's a graveyard, that means that um, they're not going to be able to build on that land, right? <laughs> So I guess that's how we're going to keep the farm in the Bordelon's family. Um, she tells Dominic about Ralph Angel and the farm. She hopes the news about the bones will help Ralph Angel keep the farm. Um, Dominic's happy to help um, before he heads out. You know, he tells Nova that, you know, bring him a plate from the baby shower. And um, Nova said, well, why don't you go with me to the baby shower? So I guess they are a couple now. So let's see, Prosper and Billy are wearing um, color-coordinated outfits. Um, it demonstrates their growth together, and they're attending the shower, but Billy's nervous about how Unvi will react towards her, but Prosper lets her know that um, he got her back this time, and he will shut Unvi down. Blue made it home, possibly for the last time, and Ralph Angel measured his height for, wait a minute, Oh, made it back to the farm for the last time. I'm like, why did I write that? It may be the last time that Blue gets to come home to the farm. Um, Blue doesn't know that they're moving out yet, though. And so when he points out the boxes, Ralph Angel takes him outside um, to have the talk with him and let him know that they are losing the farm. Um, Blue asks Darla and Ralph Angel why there are boxes in the living room. Y'all know I was talking earlier about... Um, Ralph Angel and the robbery. So that came up in um, episode number nine. So he tells Blue that, you know, he doesn't want that life for him. He tells Blue about him robbing the store and he doesn't want that life for him and tells him about the vision he had for Blue. And Ralph Angel tells him that they may lose the farm for a little while, you know, but hopefully they'll be able to get back. Blue's sad about the news, but seems to take it in stride. He listens to Ralph Angel as he warns him never to act out in desperation. So Aunt Vi shows up with Hollywood, you know, and a bunch of pies. And let's see. Oh, she had brought some pies for Blue. And let's see, you know, everybody's happy to be there celebrating this festive occasion. Um, at the baby shower, Blue tells Aunt Vi about his time in D.C. He tells her, you know, he has this school project, and he did very well. Then Nova shows up with Dominic and introduces him to Micah and Blue. Um, he meets everyone else, and Charlie's surprised to see Nova and Dominic there together. Nova tells them that they aren't a couple, but she may want it to happen eventually. <laughs> so the baby shower gets underway and um, Ralph Angel and Dollar, you know, they express their thanks to everyone for coming and supporting them. Dollar thanks each person personally. Um, this process leads to Dollar and the crying and being happy and overwhelmed. So later on, Blue shows Prosper and other guests photos of his time in DC. And Billy is in the kitchen talking with Dominic and Nova. Billy tells them that Prosper wants her to move back home. Um, she's considering in light of things occurring back in Chicago. Overall, Nova's glad Billy came to the uh, baby shower. 
Um, Aunt Vi sees Hollywood having a really good time playing the baby shower game with Blue. And her feelings were hurt when Dollar told her and Charlie that she's been comfortably sleeping on the floor and only mothers would understand. <laughs> so, anyway, let's see. Let's see, um, Nova goes up to Micah's room and they're talking and he's ex explaining to Nova his feelings about Isaiah. And then of course, you know, Nova is bisexual so she can understand. And she tells Micah not to stress or worry or force anything to happen with Isaiah and that he doesn't have to define anything for others. And Micah welcomes the advice. So basically, she's telling um, Micah, you know, even though you're straight, you might, well, we know he's gay in real life, but on the show, he's straight. But if you decide you done fell in love with your best friend, then there's nothing wrong with you going and telling your friend you <laughs> fell in love with him. Okay. So later on at the shower, Ralph Angel, Billy Prosper, and others talk about a co-op form from the settlement money. Um, the goal of the co-op is to combine their resources to increase power. Um, Billy had her firm look into it and it appears to be a really good option, especially since they could use the first right of purchase for various pieces of land in the county. And when they all um, thank Ralph Angel, he in turn thanks Dollar for giving him the idea. Um, the shower winds down, Dollar talks to Aunt Vi and Charlie about their impending move. And then out of the blue, Charlie says that, you know, she's going to be on the road campaigning. She's barely going to be home. So she says that if Darla and Ralph Angel want to move into her house, that she would be more than happy to let them do that. And then Aunt Vi says, well, you also can move back to my house. So at the end of the day, uh, Ralph, Angel, and Dollar, you know, they said that they would much rather live in Aunt Vi's house than live in shop at Charlie's house. So later that night, um, Dominic got more information regarding the bones. Apparently the bones were from a massacre that took place in the late 19th century. Nova comes up with the idea that the cemetery could be marked as a historical site by the state. If that happens, the Landry's can't take the farm. And so back at his dorm room, Micah arrives and heads to Isaiah's room, he sees a whiteboard on the door, writes a note and leaves food because Isaiah wasn't there. So back at the farm, Darla tells Ralph Angel about the offers from Aunt Vi and Charlie. Darla thinks it would be a great idea to accept Aunt Vi's offer and she would be able to provide help and guidance to them, I guess, you know, with their relationship, with the baby coming up and all that good stuff. Ralph Angel agrees. And so they're going to move in with Aunt Vi, y'all. And that's it for um, episode nine. We're finally to the season finale, episode 10. and you would be one of them. So, the season finale begins with Hollywood packing for a trip that seems really serious. Like, he, he's on a mission to go somewhere. And Aunt Vi packs him food and tells Hollywood, you know, baby, please return and come back home. So she obviously knows where he's going. Uh, Ralph Angel meets with Charlie and Nova regarding the remains found on the land. Nova tells them um, she suspects the remains were of Black people, part of the Thibodeau massacre in the 1880s. Charlie then asks about the co-op and Ralph Angel says that it might not be strong enough yet to fight um, Sam Landry regarding the strip mall in the county. And that they all figure out that the co-op idea and registering the farm as a historic landmark could stretch Sam and the Landry's stand. 
Um, Blue's almost a big brother and he feels inspired. Um, he tells Aunt Vi that new life inspires people to do better. So she ho he hoping that his little sister um, is going to make his daddy be better. <laughs> Stop being such a damn criminal and making rush stupid decisions. So Dominic stops by Nova's home, you know, with some good news. Um, the state approved the landmark for the Bordelon farm. Um, the news brings tears to Nova's eyes. Um, Hollywood also made it to his destination. Um, he's at a bar playing pool when um, and talking to a guy who knows Theo, and he's hoping that the guy can give him information on Theo and what Theo has been up to. Now, once again, we don't know how many days, you know, have passed by <laughs> between these episodes. Uh, how did Dominic get this historic landmark? Because we have had stories here where I live where they are trying to get buildings marked as historic landmarks to keep them from getting torn down during our, we have a lot of gentrification going on here. It'd be taking months, sometimes years, to get those designations. How did um, Dominic get this um, designation so quick? And we know not that much time has passed by because Darla still ain't had that baby, right? And she like pregnant, pregnant at this point. But anyway, he was able um, to get the designation, so they moving forward. So Aunt Vi and Charlie... You know, they have a discussion uh, regarding an idea that could result in Sam giving them the farm back. Um, Charlie needs Aunt Vi to lure Sam to the diner, and Aunt Vi agrees. Um, Billy presents Prosper with flowers as a thank you for submitting his settlement for the co-op. Um, things turn somber when Billy speaks about her partner. Um, she indicates to Prosper they're on the verge of separating. Because Prosper was like, well, how y'all doing? You know, what's going on in y'all life? <laughs> I think he had asked her that a couple of episodes. So I guess she finally came in and said, well, it's pretty much over. So then Isaiah stops by Micah's room and Micah um, gives him a copy of the photo that they took together um, from his photo project and apologizes for his earlier behavior. Isaiah accepts his apology and Isaiah suggests that they talk later to dig deeper into the little spat that they had, you know. So like right here, it seems like it was just a couple of days ago when they had that argument. So anyway, Darla and Ralph Angel um, received news of the farm becoming a historical landmark. And of course, they are both excited and impressed by the news. And Ralph Angel is relieved um, this happened and promised that he'll get his farm back no matter what. So Ralph Angel and Darla uh, meet with a farmer by the name of Cardell uh, regarding joining the co-op um, after, you know, a conversation because Cardell, you know, he pretty much fed up with the board loans and all these great ideas. Um, but they are finally able to um, convince him to join the co-op. The next morning, um, Prosper and Billy talk with her boyfriend. Prosper asks Billy how did her talk go with her boyfriend, and she says that it didn't go well. Um, Prosper's convinced that Billy's still hurting over what happened between her and Jimmy Dale, and I guess that's why she can't keep a relationship. And he tells her that if she wants to run home, he'll be there to catch her. So um, Billy, pack up them kids and come home to St. Joe and live there permanently. So meanwhile, Hollywood is one step closer to meeting with Theo. Um, he's at the bar Theo goes to often. Um, he shows the bartender a picture of Theo and he learns when he could, uh, what time Theo typically comes into the bar. So back to Isaiah and Micah, they have their talk, you know, while hanging out at the park um, during the conversation. Micah says that he doesn't feel like he's gay. Well, actually, when they were having the conversation, <laughs> Micah all but said he wanted to be in a relationship with um, Isaiah. You know, he was basically like, I'm having feelings I ain't never had before. <laughs> but it was actually um, Isaiah who was looking confused, like, boy, what is you trying to say? And then he finally said, well, what is we talking about here? <laughs> no, before I take this the wrong way. And so um, it doesn't appear that Isaiah is attracted to Micah in that way. And um, 
you know, he was just being a friend. And because of his past experiences, he knows that it's okay for men to have intimate friendship moments that are not intimate in a sexual way. And so then Michael, you know, basically says, um, what did Michael say to him? He says, well, I think Michael said something about um, he didn't want to like be his boyfriend or something. He didn't want that type of relationship. And then um, Isaiah was kind of like, well, I'm good because I don't want that type of relationship <laughs> with you either. So um, they, they agreed that, you know, they could love each other in a platonic way that it doesn't have. No, I think Michael said, well, it's not like I want to have sex with you, but I have these intimate feelings about you. And then Isaiah was like, well, I'm glad you don't want to have sex with you because I don't want to have sex with you. So once again, I don't know if Micah is not Isaiah's type or if Isaiah is attracted to men that dress as women, you know, trans, what do they call it? Trans women. I don't know because I'm still back to why did I write transphobic in my notes from episode six. But anyway, they're just going to be friends. And maybe Isaiah is just a really nice guy who, you know, because of his experiences, understands that it is okay for men to be close to one another in the same way that women can be close and it not be sexual. So we're going to leave it at that until next season and see what happens. Isaiah might not be, even be on next season, <laughs> so the way they'd be bringing people in and dropping them off. So despite the lack of romantic attraction, they both tell each other that they love one another. Then we have Dominic and Nova. You know, they're also spending a lot of time together. They're out bonding. Um, they're on a date and they're walking along the street or walking down the street. Um, no, Dominic uses this time to express his feelings for Nova. Nova also lets him know that, you know, she has feelings for him. But, you know, she's been hurt a lot in the past. And so they agree, you know, they're going to take it slow, but they do want to pursue what's going on. And they end their night, you know, with a passionate kiss together. So we'll see where that situation goes because we know Nova can't keep a man either. So Cha. Charlie and Davis, you know, they own the phone and Charlie is having second thoughts about her political aspirations. Um, Davis tells her to look out the window. <laughs> so, so Charlie look out the window and Davis done playing the picnic outside. Now Davis, one minute Davis, okay, I already said this in another video. Davis is supposed to have a professional basketball team in California, right? Ladies basketball team. Davis also has a daughter that we ain't heard nothing about this season. And well, we did hear about it when Charlie was telling Gail King about it. But we ain't seen Davis with his daughter this entire season, right? What does Davis keep coming to Louisiana for? If he has accepted a job you, you get what I'm saying? But David said that he had a very, very long layover. And that's why he's at Charlie's house doing this picnic, okay? <laughs> so anyway, um, Charlie go down the stairs. And so, you know, he's telling Charlie that he's willing to make their long distance relationship work. Um, Charlie tells Davis that um, she's tired, okay? And that she's tired of not putting herself first. She wants to be doing things that make her happy. And Davis says that he is willing to help. And Charlie says that um, she's moving back to California and she accepts his... Actually, I can't remember she said she was moving back to California. She told him that she wanted to plan the next picnic and that the picnic was going to be out by the Pacific Coast somewhere. And, you know, it was going to be all romantic. But the way Charlie was talking about that picnic sounded like this was her vision for their wedding. So once again, I think we're going to see Charlie and Davis get married. And I think that would be really um, poetic that Queen Sugar started with Charlie and Davis in California and their marriage breaking up, coming to an end. So I think it would be beautiful to see the season or the series end with Charlie and Davis back on the Pacific getting married. Don't y'all think that would be beautiful? And maybe the whole um, family, the whole borderline family 
being in California, you know, because Charlie had to come to St. Joe. So now they go to California to see Charlie get married. I think that would be so beautiful and I would be so happy to see that. But anyway, uh, we go on to Billy and Prosper and they get um, great news from Ralph Angel. Prosper learns that the farmer Cordell joined the co-op and it is at this moment that Darla's water breaks. Charlie, not Charlie, Darla is about to give birth to her baby girl. But before she can do that, okay, um, well, we'll go ahead along with Darla. So Billy and Prosper show up at Ralph Angel's house as Darla's water has broken. And so, you know, Blue is there. So Billy, I think, took Blue. Prosper is like, what I can do? They say, oh, go boil some water. Then they were going to um, fill the bath. No, Darla was sitting on the edge of the bed with Ralph Angel. And then she says that they learned that the doula and the midwife can't get there in time. So they're on the phone and she's walking them through the process on what they need to do. So while Prosper and Billy are boiling the water, a dollar decides that she wants to go get in the bathtub and have the baby there at home. And so um, Rap Prosper comes back in and he's going to help Ralph and Jill get Darla to the bathtub. So we're back at the diner. Unvite Charlie and Sam Landry are going to have their meeting. But instead of Sam Landry coming in, Parker finally shows up. I'm like, girl, it is about time. So you guys know the actress Amina I can't think of her, Van, Amina Van, is that her name, Amira Van? Anyway, she has been gone from the show because she had a baby. She's still carrying her, you know, baby weight, but she's still a beautiful woman. And so she shows up and they basically tell her that um, they're not there to talk about, you know, giving up the land, but they show her the paperwork that it's a historic landmark. Uh, Parker is still trying to fight, you know, the fight the feeling, okay, stand for her dad, they're going to take this land, but no matter what she says, Charlie has an answer for it, and she warns Parker that the Black-owned farmers would be taking back their town, including buying back the outlet mall. Um, it's at this point that Theo walks in with Hollywood battered and bruised, and he basically tells everything, you know, that Sam Landry had hired him to set Ralph Angel up. He says he's tired. He doesn't want to be a part of this anymore, and that he is ready to tell the truth, come what may. And so that was the season finale. And like I told you guys earlier, um, the next season, season seven, which starts in the summer of 2022, probably June or July, will be the final season for Queen Sugar. Not sure. I guess it'll be a fight. The season will be about them fighting um, this historical landmark designation, maybe. Um, Darla will have the baby next season, you know, because she's in the tub at this point. So it'll probably start new birth, first episode, new birth, the little girl comes. And I'm suspecting that the last episode will probably be Charlie and Davis getting married. So that's it for me. Um, go ahead, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Did you enjoy season six? Are you looking forward to season seven? Are you sad that Queen Sugar is about to come to an end, that next season will be the last season? And what are your ideas about how they are going to close this out? We know when they close that um, green leaf, child, they killed the bishop. I'm thinking they're going to kill Aunt Vi. <laughs> I, think, I really do. I mean, I'm not... I don't think it's funny, but I think Aunt Vi might leave us in season seven. Um, we started with the death of, oh, you know what? Aunt Vi might not die because let's think about it. Season one, Ernest died. Season seven, Ralph Angel and Darla have a new baby because we know Blue is not Ralph Angel's biological child. So we started with the death. We began with the birth. We started with the dissolution of a marriage. We end with the remarriage. Okay, so yeah. So um, next season might be a good season.
listen, y'all, but I do know that I'm not sad that Queen Sugar is ending. I am appreciative for the opportunity that we had to go on this journey with the Borderlands. So that's it for me. Leave your comments below, rate the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next time, I shall talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.